morning. Welcome to the service of worship here at First Presbyterian Church. Today is the first Sunday in the season of Advent. How exciting. Welcome to those of you who are joining us via Zoom this morning, and welcome to those of you who might be worshiping with us uh, via YouTube. It's good to have everyone here. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of God as we individually pray the prayer of preparation and we listen collectively to our prelude. Awake, people of God, and stay alert for Christ's coming. Grace to you and peace from God, who sent Jesus to us. Make, Make your, your ways, ways known, known to us, us O God. God. Show, Show us, us once more your awesome presence. Today we bear witness to the light of Christ with all the faithful of every time and place. With the prophets of Israel, we await the promised salvation of the Lord and look for the coming of the one who will bring justice and righteousness to the earth. The word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
As a new year begins in the church, we seek to leave behind our past unfaithfulness. We remember our doubts, the empty times when prayer is forgotten, and our focus is narrowed to petty concerns. God is waiting to hear from us. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Let us pray. Awesome, awesome God, God, we confess the, the sin of our separation from you. We have not called upon you, and we have not listened for your call to us. Lord, you alone, the loving community in which you reign is acknowledged, and your purposes are served. Move us to that place, we pray. Amen. God's grace has come to us in Jesus Christ. God restores us to a right relationship with the eternal. God is faithful and will strengthen us to face all circumstances. Praise God, the source of all things. Thanks be, Thanks God. be to God. The peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also and with, with you. you. You may be seated. If we have any young people who'd like to come forward, now is the time. I'll do it from right here. <laughs> it's not a problem. I do not mind. I want to take just a moment to thank uh, all the people who took time on Saturday, right, to decorate the, the, the church and especially the sanctuary in celebration of our new season of Advent. Um, and what I was gonna do was, if, if you were here last week or you watched worship last week, I passed out our liturgical calendar that goes in a circle, right? And it's not the only calendar that we use in the church. Uh, another one we have, it's kinda hard to see, but over there on this side of this calendar is in the entire year of 2024, the year that we're in right now. And if you can look real carefully, you may not be able to see it from way back there, but December is all in purple until Christmas Eve, and then it's white for the rest of the month. So this is a purple month, pretty much, for us. And that means we're in the season of Advent most of the month. Advent is a time of waiting. And I'm going to talk in the sermon about how hard waiting is for most of us, but we're waiting for a couple of things. We're waiting again to celebrate the birth of Jesus that will take place in Bethlehem, and we, we know that story, or we keep learning that story, which is really great. But we're also waiting for Jesus to come back, because there's this promise of Christ's return. So it's a both and. It's, 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 uh, it, it, it's a really, really amazing season, not only because we're waiting for these great things, but of course it leads us right into Christmas as well. So keep, keep coming to worship. Keep looking at how amazing and beautiful our sanctuary looks with our nativity scene over here and our advent wreath here and all the, all the purple and the Christmas-like decorations. You know, keep coming back for that. But on Christmas Eve, you know, we'll, we'll be in white and uh, we'll have the Christmas Eve service. It's, it really is the most wonderful time of the year. So um, you can head on back to wherever you're heading for this next part of your life. Good morning. 
Child of humankind, born of God, reveal to us once more the power and glory which claims us all. Let your world, word make its impact within and among us. Come to reign among us and rule every heart. Amen. Amen. For our New Testament lesson today, the reading comes from 1 Thessalonians 3, 9 through 13. In your, new, uh, your, your Pew Bible, it's page 204. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints.
That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Our Old Testament, Old Testament lesson and the text for our sermon this morning comes from uh, the prophet Jeremiah, verses 14 through 16 of chapter 33. If you're going to read in the Pew Bible, it's on page 708. My friends, hear the word of God. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you've ever been on a long car ride with kids, you know what a test of patience that truly is. It is guaranteed somewhere along the unchanging plains of Kansas or Nebraska, you'll hear, are we there yet? Repeated endlessly. No explanation about the beauty of the journey will satisfy them. They want to be there now. We adults aren't so different. Whether it's losing weight, reaching a financial goal, or growing in our faith, we struggle with waiting. We want to be there now. The people of Israel in Jeremiah's time no doubt felt the same frustration. Exiled from their homeland, separated from all they knew, they longed to return. Into this despair, Jeremiah brings a startling word, not of immediate rescue, but of a promise. The days are coming, declares the Lord, a promise of restoration, salvation, and a righteous branch to fulfill God's covenant. The Hebrew people of Jeremiah's time were in a dark season. Exiled to Babylon after Jerusalem's destruction, they faced unimaginable loss. Jeremiah himself had not been taken to Babylon, probably to Egypt, but his messages reached the exiles. And in Jeremiah 33, he shares a word directly from God, a promise that transcends their immediate circumstances. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise that I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is good and just and right in the land. Jeremiah doesn't promise an immediate return to Jerusalem. Instead, he offers a vision of a future Messiah who will bring justice and righteousness and salvation. God's promises will endure even when the fulfillment seems far away. Imagine the exiles hearing Jeremiah's words. They're in a foreign land, stripped of their homes and freedoms, yearning for their old lives. But Jeremiah doesn't tell them what they want to hear. Instead, he instructs them, and this is earlier in Jeremiah, he instructs them to settle in Babylon to build houses, to plant gardens, and to even pray for their captors. Can you imagine? That wasn't the rescue they longed for. It was an invitation to trust God's timing and to trust that that timing was perfect, even if the weight felt unbearable. How often do we find ourselves in the same place, waiting for healing, for guidance, for answers to prayer? We want to be there now, to the place where all our doubts are gone, our faith is unshakable, and life feels secure. Yet Jeremiah's message reminds us, waiting is part of God's plan. Jeremiah's instruction, instructions to the exiles to build and to plant and to seek the welfare of the city, teach us that waiting is not passive. 
Just as the Israelites were called to thrive even in exile, we are called to prepare for God's promises in our lives. So I have a list of three handy spiritual practices for today. One, plant gardens of faith by cultivating daily habits like prayer and scripture reading. Two, build houses of hope by strengthening relationships and making your home a place where God's spirit is welcome. And then three, seek the welfare of your community by engaging in acts of service and sharing the love of Christ with those around you. So for those of you trying to take notes, one, plant gardens of faith, two, build houses of hope, three, seek the welfare of your community. Waiting with purpose strengthens our trust in God and aligns our hearts with God's timing. In the church calendar, we were reminded of this act of waiting during the season of Advent. Advent is a time of preparation, a season where we reflect on two great moments in God's plan, the coming of Christ as a baby in Bethlehem and his return promise to restore all creation. So, as we light the candles of hope and peace and joy and love, we remember that waiting is not empty, but is full of expectation. We look back to the fulfillment of God's promise in the birth of Jesus, the righteous branch that Jeremiah pro prophesied. At the same time, we look forward to Christ's return when he will establish his perfect kingdom. Advent teaches us that waiting is holy work, an opportunity to get ready our hearts and lives for Christ's presence. Waiting during Advent mirrors the life of faith itself, anticipating the promises of God while living fully in the present. That's a really good thought. I'm going to say it again for my own edification. Waiting during Advent mirrors the life of faith itself, anticipating the promises of God while living fully in the present. It reminds us that God's timing is perfect and every moment of waiting draws us closer to the fulfillment of God's ultimate plan. Jeremiah's promise of a righteous branch finds its ultimate fulfillment in Jesus Christ. As the descendant of David, Jesus embodies the justice and righteousness prophesied in Jeremiah 33. Through his life, death, and resurrection, he brings salvation not only to Israel, but to all who believe. And today, as we await Christ's return, we hold on to the assurance that his promises are true. Just as God was faithful to Israel, God will be faithful to us. Jeremiah 33, 16 says, In those days Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This promise points to a time when all creation will be restored under Christ's reign. Until then, we are called to wait with faith and with purpose. So, whether you're in a season of waiting for answers, growth, or healing, take heart. God's promises are not delayed. They are being fulfilled in God's perfect time. In waiting, let us trust God, prepare our hearts, and live with hope. For indeed, the days are coming. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ has risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Please uh, join us as we sing hymn 113, Angels We Have Heard on High.
may be seated. Elwood, I just want to let you know that I'm going to do this skip from right here with the handheld mic. Can everybody see me? Can you see me? Okay, Carol. Good morning, everyone. My name is Amos, and I'm an angel. No, really, it's true. I'm sure I don't look much like an angel to you all right now. I'm not wearing long white robes or wings or even a halo. But that's the way it often is when angels come to visit with folks. All the trappings are stripped away. Makes us more friendly and approachable. Up in heaven, we keep tabs on what you're all doing down here. Bummer about the election, huh? And we're aware that here in your church, you're starting the season of Advent. Advent, of course, leads up to Christmas. So I was sent here this morning to tell you just a little bit about my firsthand experience of what happened that night that Jesus was born. I was a brand new angel back then, still getting used to heaven and what it meant to live there. It's both very similar to here and yet very, very different. And I wish I could tell you more about that, but I think you'd find it hard to imagine what it's like to exist beyond time and exist without all the physical things of life like gravity and fatigue and pain. So I will tell you the best that I can about the small part of the Christmas story that I played in words and images that you can imagine. Because I remember what it was like to live here, except that it was almost 2,000 years ago, and I was a shepherd. You know, being a shepherd is not a very glamorous profession. The hours are awful. The pay is negligible. And you always, always smell like sheep. But I learned that during my life, that shepherds, for the most part, are good people. And that figures into my story. Lots of people still know the Christmas story, not as many as used to, but I don't think I need to give you all the details. Besides, there's a lot about that night that I still don't know. It was a great big deal in heaven, and there were more angels involved than all the heads of all the pins on the planet could fit. Yeah, let that sentence come to you. I know you're used to thinking of heaven as above earth, and while it's true that part of the story with my fellow angels happened up in the sky, many of us were here on earth. I myself was hanging out with some shepherds. It was a chilly night, I remember. But the shepherds had built a small fire and were talking and taking turns keeping watch while others dozed. And then it happened. Heaven broke onto and into the earth. And even though I knew that something big was in the works, I think I was just as awestruck as the shepherds who were to hear the news of Jesus' birth and the angelic messengers who delivered that news. Because those angels were in full regalia and unbelievably loud. You know, the harp section of heavenly host is actually quite small. Most of the angels that night were playing drums and bagpipes. Talk about raising the dead but I get ahead of myself. 
Naturally, the shepherds were amazed and confused about what they should do about this great news of exceeding joy from above. It was my part to suggest that they take a little time and go to Bethlehem and pay their respects to the family because this was a -a once-in-a-lifetime thing. This was a once-in-the-history-of-the-world kind of thing. I'll watch the flock, I assured them. And so they went. And when they came back, I could still see the expressions of wonder and awe in their faces by the moonlight. Shepherds are not boisterous people by nature. They have to conserve their energy for the long days and the long nights with the sheep. But I could tell that night they had experienced something life-changing. And they talked among themselves about it until long after sunrise. I slipped away when I had a chance. But believe me, all the angels I talked to that morning looked the same way as the shepherds. We were all part of the most wonderful thing imaginable. It was, as they say, totally awesome. Well, that's my part of the story. Now, I understand that just like Scrooge's ghosts, you'll be having more visitors this Advent season. But even so, let me be the first to say, happy and blessed Advent to one and to all. We have been enriched and strengthened in so many ways by the gifts of God. Our offerings enable our church's witness in this community and a caring outreach around the globe. Let us give as we have been blessed.
gracious God, we give our best to you with gratitude and faith. We dedicate these symbols of thankfulness and all of our days to serving you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This is a time where we share joys and concerns, and that leads us into a time of congregational prayer. So I have a joy card that has been handed to me. It's from Wendy, who says that she is joyful for those who helped decorate the sanctuary yesterday. Thank you, she says. Again, it looks beautiful in here. Lily, do we have any joys uh, from the folks worshiping via Zoom this morning? Well, I have a joy, which is that I am joyful that we have heard some absolutely beautiful music today. Absolutely. Absolutely. No mention of the skit, however, but that's okay. <laughs> it's fine. Not that I'm sensitive. Okay. Um, We give thanks to God for these blessings. Thank, thanks be to God. I do not have any concern cards. We'll turn back to Lily again. Okay, I'm dominating this, but I do have a concern. I visited with my uh, college friend, Sandy, um, who lives in Chicago, and she is dealing with advanced uh, MS, and it's progressing rapidly. But it was a joy to be with her. <laughs> Thank you. For these people and all who are in need. God inspires us to pray. Here's our prayers and answer our prayers. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, we thank you for gathering us here to worship you on this, the first day of the season of Advent. We thank you again for all the blessings that you continue to bestow upon us, the blessings of life of family, of community, of a nation where the principles uh, of freedom and human rights and justice are all foundational to who we are. Help us to continue to live those out today and tomorrow and into the future. And let us live out our faith as well. Help us, Lord, through your spirit, to be compassionate and forgiving, loving, hopeful, joyful, to bring your coming kingdom more and more fully into fulfillment. We now take a moment or two to open our hearts fully to you and ask that you will hear the prayers of the people. Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 83. If you're comfortably able, please stand. Let us all sing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
You may be seated. How many years now have we had this version of the hymnal? 10 years, 12 years, and I always forget that there are two tunes to come thou long expected Jesus. I really meant number 82. But, but change is good, right? Announcement time. You can find them on your bulletin insert. There will be a congregational meeting to be held immediately after service today. So how this will go is we'll listen to the postlude. Um, folks on Zoom, you are welcome and invited to please stay around. Um, so uh, we'll have postlude. Um, well, I'll check and make sure we have an, a quorum. We do at this moment, so don't let anybody go anywhere. And then uh, we'll have an opening prayer. Uh, we'll hear the nomination. Uh, from, we'll have hear the nominees from the nominating committee. Uh, we will vote, and then we will dismiss. And then we're going to head. Uh, those of us who are here are going to head to the fellowship hall for uh, Christmas around the world. Following worship in the congregational meeting, join us in fellowship ball for Christmas around the world and a potluck dinner. I cannot wait. Presbyterian men will meet in the fellowship hall on at noon on Thursday the 12th for pizza, fellowship, and more favorite travel reports. For more information, you can contact Harry, Rick, or Bill. And coming up on the 15th is the annual Deacon's Cookie Sunday. Church members and friends are encouraged to bring cookies, including sugar-free options, to church that morning to enjoy during fellowship. Cookie plates will be prepared to deliver to church members and friends who are unable to attend worship regularly. Contact Pam Holt for more details. All right, so let us hear our blessing and then our prelude, and then we will meet. We've heard this one before. This is a great one. May the hills lie low. May the hills lie low. May the... How do we pronounce that? Sloughs? Sloughs. May the hills lie low. May the sloughs fill up in thy way. May all evil sleep. May all good awake in thy way. Amen. <laughs>